Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Math 301 Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. Today, we're talking about trees, which is in chapter 9. So a tree is a connected graph that contains no cycles. So remember that, that what a connected means is that your graph has only one part. Another way of saying that is you can get from any vertex to any other vertex by doing a walk. So what I've drawn here below is in fact a forest made up of eight trees. And so let's look at each of them separately. So each one is uh, connected. And containing no cycles, that means that there are no loops. So there are different ways of expressing that condition. One is that there's exactly one way to get from one vertex to another if you don't backtrack. And we'll see some other definitions later. So here's the tree with one vertex. There's only one of them. Here's the tree with two vertices. There's only one of those. Here's the tree with three vertices. There's only one of those. So far, we're just getting paths. Here's the first tree with four vertices. But finally, we get a, a tree which is not a path, but has four vertices. And then there are uh, three trees with five vertices, which I've drawn here. And you can start um, trying to classify these things based on the, the largest, longest path from one vertex to another, or based on the degrees of the vertices. There are lots of different ways of classifying these. And uh, unfortunately, some of this went off the page, but this sequence counts the number of unlabeled trees on n vertices, starting with n equals zero. So here are the cases n equals one, two, three. And then I also drew the cases uh, n equals four and n equals five. So there's not a great formula here. Uh, there is a recurrence relation for these, but there's not a great formula. And in section 9.3, we'll come back to looking at labeled trees on n vertices, where we label these vertices by the numbers one through n. And in that case, there's a, a very nice formula. So uh, great. So let's now um, think about one thing that these trees all have in common. And even though we um, can't count the number of these trees, they do each have something in common, which is that the number of edges is the same. For example, these last three each have four edges, even though they are quite different looking trees. I guess one thing I should mention, you might wonder, wouldn't it be a different tree if I instead removed this edge and this vertex and moved them over here? But, but they're not because those graphs are isomorphic. So if you flip it over, then you would, you would have the same graph back again. So, so these are really the only ones on five vertices. Okay, so here's the, the theorem we want to prove in section 9.2, which is that every tree with n vertices has n minus one edges. And the way we're going to do this is with strong induction. So we're going to start with the case n equals one. And in that case, we only have one vertex. And so the number of edges, let's let E Let's let E be the number of edges. So when N equals one, notice that uh, E is zero. There are no edges at all on that tree with one vertex. And so in that case, we can say that the situation, our statement is true. So now we're going to um, start working with strong induction. So remember what strong induction says is that we're going to suppose the statement is true. So we're going to now let n be some number bigger than 1. And we're going to suppose the statement is true for all trees on k vertices if k is less than n. 
and we want to show that it's true uh, for trees on n vertices. Actually, I think I've done this proof before when we were talking about induction, but it's always good to do it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to think about our tree. So it could be quite a complicated tree with many vertices. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at our tree and we're going to remove one edge. So this this has this has n vertices. And let's say E is the number of edges. And we want to show that E equals n minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove an edge. Now we, you can choose whichever edge you want to remove. Maybe we might do this one in the middle. So here we're going to remove this edge. But the argument works no matter which edge you remove. We could have also removed this one over here or this one over here. And we're not going to remove any vertices. We're just going to uh, re remove one edge. So let's let n1 be, so that splits the graph in half. We could actually spend some time proving that, but but it's sort of intuitive that that's how it works because since there were no cycles in the graph, there was only one way to get from uh, one vertex to another. And so now if you look at the two vertices that were at the endpoints of the edge that we just removed, there's no other way to get from one of them to the other the only way that we could have gotten there was through that edge that we just removed. Okay, so we have two pieces in this graph, and so we're going to let n1 be the number of vertices on the left-hand side, and n2 be the number of vertices on the right-hand side, or for the first piece and the second piece. And we can say that n is the sum of n1 and n2, because we didn't get rid of any vertices. By the inductive hypothesis, the number of edges on the left-hand side is one less than the number of vertices, and the number of edges on the right-hand side is one less than the number of vertices. That's because n1 is less than n because there are two different parts of this graph, and so the number of vertices in each part has to be less than the number of vertices that we had before. So by the inductive hypothesis, the number of edges, in the first one is n1 minus one, and on the second one is, is n2 minus one. And now, um, wish I had more space at the bottom here, but what we can say is that, um, that E is the number of edges in the left plus the number of edges in the right, that's E1 plus E2, plus the one edge that we removed. And so if you write that all out, that's N1 minus one plus N2 minus one plus an extra one. And that simplifies as N1 plus N2 minus one, which is exactly n minus one. Okay, so that, that little box up here is the end of the proof, and we've just proved the inductive, we've proved the statement for n vertices by strong induction. Okay, so uh, that's it for the number of edges in a tree with n vertices, and in the next, in the next section we'll talk about the number of ways to label trees with n vertices.